So here comes the first question. And that is only about 14% of all people can wiggle their ears. So this, this isn't quite as serious as uh, COVID treatments and murder. Uh, it's about wiggling your ears. Is this percent different for millionaires? Kind of a goofy and silly question. In other words, is it, are millionaires different in, in, in what percentage of them can wiggle their ears? I don't know if you can wiggle your ears. It says 14% of all people can wiggle their ears. But is this different for millionaires? Are millionaires better or worse at wiggling their ears? That just seems kind of like a silly question. Um, of the three, now, so how, how are they going to decide whether maybe ear wiggling is the key to becoming a millionaire? Maybe. I, I kind of have my doubts, but uh, let's see. Um, and so they're going to do a test. They tested it out, right? They're testing their hypothesis. Of the 313 millionaires surveyed, 38 could wiggle their ears. Huh. What can be concluded at the alpha 0.05 level of significance? What does all that stuff mean? Well, here's what we want to do. First off, just let me just tell you off the bat. What, what, do, you, what do we think? 38 people out of 313. Can we get a percentage on that? What is 38 divided by 313? I'm going to divide it on my calculator just real quick here. It's coming out 0.12. Uh, one four, so that's a uh, twelve point fourteen percent. So did that come out different than than the percentage for um, for most of of all of all people? Did did the percentage of million this uh, uh, this is of millionaires millionaires can wiggle their ears. Um, so 12.14% of the millionaires can wiggle their ears, right? 38 out of 313, right? They, they surveyed 313 millionaires and 38 of them could wiggle their ears. So 38 out of 313, which comes out 0.1214 or 12.14% of millionaires can wiggle their ears. In fact, let's just leave it at, it's about 12%, right? About, about good enough estimate, about 12% of millionaires can wiggle their ears. So is that different? The question being put to us is, is this percent different for millionaires? Like do millionaires have a different, different percentage of ear wiggling ability? What do you think? Yes or no? Nobody knows? Can you repeat that? So um, what percentage of the general population can wiggle their ears according to this problem? Um, it would be the rest of the, uh, like, 38 minus, or the four, is it the 14? Yeah, right. Only about 14% of all people can wiggle their ears. Mm -hmm. Are we, okay, is yeah. that making sense? So 14% yeah, yeah, yeah. of all people can wiggle their ears. That's for like the whole population. 14% of all people can wiggle their ears. What percent of millionaires can wiggle their ears? 12. 12%. Well, is that all millionaires? No, that's just the 313 millionaires we surveyed in the sample, right? Yeah. So the question is, is the percentage of millionaires who can wiggle their ears different? Yeah. Would it be different? So it seems like 12% came out different than 14%, right? Is everybody seeing that? 12% seems to come out different than 14%. So would it be correct then to conclude that the percentage of millionaires that can wiggle their ears is what? Lower, different than the, than the general percentage of people 
they can wiggle their ears. Are these numbers, whoops, I'm a little lost in my words here. Are these numbers different? Yes. <clears throat> yes. They are. But you know what I'm going to ask? But what if it was just a lucky sample? Is this really strong evidence beyond a reasonable doubt? Do you see the problem? If this was a court of law, and remember the court of law thing, right? What if this was a court of law and we were going to put this person away or not based upon evidence? So let's think about it. We think, well, 14% of the general population can wiggle their ears. And we did this little study on 313 millionaires and 38 of them, which is 12%, of them can wiggle their ears. So that's different. 12% is different than 14%. Yes, it is different, but it's not like a lot different, is it? It's just a little bit different. And maybe it was just a lucky sample. You know, the 313 that we happened to survey came out pretty close. You know, if just a couple more of them were ear wigglers, if it had been like, I don't know what, if it had been like maybe 40 instead of 313, that might have been up around, um, let me see, would that be about, that'd be 13%. So maybe 42 or 43, would that have done it? Uh, yeah, 43 would have rounded to 14%. So if it had just been 43, if it had just been 43, just five more, then it would have come out exactly the same. It would It would have changed it to be, to be exactly the same as the percentage in the general population. So if we had just happened by luck to get five more, or maybe we happened by luck to just get five fewer because of the random sample we selected, it would have come out exactly the same. So couldn't it just be a lucky sample? Is this really strong evidence beyond a reasonable doubt? Would you put somebody away based on this or, or, or give this drug, if this was a drug we were testing, to the entire nation based on this evidence alone? I, I hope not. This, this isn't really very strong evidence, is it? Do you see what I'm saying? Right? Are you getting the big picture? This is not super strong evidence. It, is it it's, it's evidence, yeah, it did come out different, yes, but not, not really different. Only, you know, if, if it had come out, you know what I mean? If it had come out like 1% or something, then we would have said, whoa, okay, yeah, the, the population in general, 14%, but, about, but um, with millionaires, only 1% can wiggle their ears. That's crazy different. That can't just be luck. That's strong evidence that millionaires are different when it comes to ear wiggling. You know, that, that would have been strongly different results. But that's not what happened. We got a percentage that's really pretty close, didn't we? Pretty close to 14%. We got 12%. So I want you to see right out of the gate that this is not very strong evidence. Already, we should be doubting. This could have happened by luck. And it wouldn't take, it wouldn't take crazy luck. It would just take five more ear wigglers, right? From 38 to 43. That's all it would have taken. Just a couple more, five more ear wigglers. And we would have come out with the exact same percentage 
of millionaires that are irregulars as we have in the general population. We would have said there's no difference at all. All right, with that, I'm just giving you the big picture. That is the big idea. So we're, we're having our doubts. Let's get in now that the study, the numbers we run on our calculator should bear out those doubts I'm mentioning. Here we go. Let's, how do we actually see that play out? First question, for this study we should use, it's gonna add, we're gonna choose the Z test for P proportion. I think that's how it's worded, right? Doesn't it say Z test for population proportion? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what okay. So that's our first, so that's what we're gonna choose. That's always gonna be in this section because we are testing proportions. All right, next question. What is our HO and what is our H1? So our HO and our H1. Well, we're going to select P, and then the next thing we have to select, it's going to say greater, less, not equal to, equal to. How do we choose what to do there? Well, we have to go to our notes. So let's come down here. Whoop, those are not our notes. Let's come on down here to our exam three notes. So you all have the exam three notes, right? That's right on the website. Everybody with me? These will be really, really helpful to you. Let me show you where they are. Um, here they are coming on down right at the start of module unit three. So unit three, exam three. So I'm right in the modules for our course, unit three, confidence and hypothesis. There it is, exam three notes. So click on that. You've got the exam three notes at the very top of the unit three module. All right, back to the problem on the iPad. Okay, so now here's the notes, the exam three notes. What does it say you should do? It says step number one, write the claim from the words, either P equals or P not equal or P greater or P less. We're not doing the U, that's the, that's the next section. Ours is, we're doing the P section right now. So first off, write the claim from the words. What's being claimed? Is it P equal or not equal or greater or less? What's, what's being stated? What's being claimed? Let's come down here and see what, where, where are they actually saying something? Right here. Is this percent different for millionaires? That means P not equal to 0.14. How did I come up with that? That's what it's different than, than 14%. Not equal it, to means different. Does that make sense? Will it always be different for each one or would it always be that? Yeah. Or does it depend on what the... Good question. If they said P greater for millionaires, then it would be P greater than 0.14. If they said P less for millionaires, then it would be P less than 0.14. Good question, Rosalinda. Thank you. Yeah. So, so P, um, you said not equal. Right. So for what, what would be the, the wording that we would find for that? Different. That, that, that different? different means not equal. Yeah. Okay. Different. Good question. Yeah. So different, different means not equal. And that's what we have, at least on my example. I'm not sure what is popping up on your example. But for my example, they use the word different. So different doesn't mean necessarily greater or necessarily less. It just means not equal, right? If something's different, it's just not equal. So that's why we use not equal, the not equal symbol. Good question. Yeah, so if they say different, you choose not equal. If they say greater, you choose greater. If they, choose, if they say less, you choose less. Less or greater than what? Well, the original percent, right? That's what they're saying. Is the percent for millionaires different than 14. Is it not equal to 0.14? Yeah, mine says higher. Yeah, higher. So I would put equal. So higher is like greater, right? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And what about lower? 
So lower is like less. Like less. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, so they could say higher, greater, bigger. Those are all greater than. And if they say lower, less, smaller, all those words mean less. And if they say different or not the same, those mean not equals. Mr. Heron? Yeah. Uh, I kind of uh, forgot what greater than looks like and less than looks like. Yeah, I've got it right on, right on the screen. I know, but the symbols, is it the mouth towards a small number or is it the mouth towards? Yeah, it's just right here, Juan. Okay. Yeah, so, um, and I can explain the meaning. Um, it, yeah, when you ever you have this, the mouth, the bigger one is on this side and the smaller one's on that side. I, that's a good question. I think a lot of people, um, uh, it's easy to forget which way. Yeah, it's like it, the, the wider side is the bigger side and the narrow side is the smaller side. So if you turned it this way, this would be the bigger one and this would be the smaller one. Again, the bigger one is on the wide mouth side. Good question, good clarification. Yeah, so the bigger one is always on the wide side. Thanks for bringing that up. So yeah, so this says P is greater, P is on the wide mouth side than 0.14. And this one down here says P is less. P is on the narrow side of the symbol, 0.14. Great, thank you. Yeah, good question. Everybody, everybody good on that? All right, so um, yeah, so depending on what they say, mine said different. So if they say different or not the same, that's not equals. And if they say greater, bigger, higher, more, that's greater, the P is on the wide mouth side. And if they say less, smaller, tinier, lower, that's less, P is on the narrow side of the symbol. All right, now, what are we gonna do for the H1? The H1 is the opposite, you, do, you choose P again, this is gonna be 0.14, it's always the same number. Now, what are we going to do? Well, you have to always do the opposite. Remember, HO and H1 are like the defense attorney and the prosecuting attorney. They're saying the opposite story. They're opposites. They're opposites. So in, in, what it, in my case, in my case, the opposite, the opposite of not equals is equals. But if you had, um, so, it would, so it would depend here, let me, let me show you the options. How about that? If, um, here, I'll, I'll do it with, um, I'll just give the three different options here. So here's the three different options. If you have not equals, the opposite of that would be equals. If you have greater, the opposite of that is less. And if you have less, the opposite of that is greater. Here, let me do, change the color for clarity. The last episode is greater. Yeah. So you always do the opposite of the symbol, like so. Is that making sense so far? Oh, wait a minute, guys. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not being very, I'm not being, I'm not being very clear on this. Let me, let me, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why. It's been a while since I've done these and I'm, I'm making one small mistake. The HOP is always equal. I don't know why I forgot that. Sorry to mess y'all up, but this will be nice. This will make it easy. The P is always equal. I forgot about that. The, I'm sorry, the HO, the HO is always equal. So that should be equals. The HO is always equal. And the H1 is what they're saying. So not equal to 0.14, P not equal to 0.14. So that's where that goes. Let me show you down here on the uh, notes. I didn't follow my own notes very well. It says, um, you're supposed to write the claim from the words. 
but then HO notice is equals. See that, see on the notes, HO is always equals. We're not doing U right now, we're doing the P. See how HO is simply equals, just like that. Nothing more to it. HO is always equal. And then as far as what is H1, you can just follow these instructions. If the claim was equals, the claim, meaning this up here, if the claim was equals, then H1 is not equals. If the claim was not equals, then H1 is not equals. If the claim was greater than or less, then H1 is the same as the claim, right? Blah, blah, blah. So follow those instructions. Let me, um, let me just reason it with you like this. I just want to reason it out with you. So again, getting back to this, the HO is always equals. Always, no exceptions. The HO is always equal. Now, let me go back to the claim. This up here is the claim. It's what they're saying. So we want to be clear on that. Let me get rid of this other stuff. Mr. Heron, so H1 is always going to be the opposite of H0? Um, it's not quite that simple. I'm confused now. Right. Yeah. Let me clarify. Uh, Isn't so, H1 always what the question states? So if it's different, it'll be opposite. And if it says it's equal to, it'll be equal to, or same as a greater than or less than. That's pretty close here. Let, let me, let me say a few words and try to make it really clear for you. So, um, what it is, is first, so first off, you've got to write the claim. So that, that's the part that people skip and then they get confused. They try to just jump down to the HOH one. So write the claim. So there's the claim. There's what's being claimed on mine. Is not equal to 0.14. That's what's being claimed. Okay. So then HO, remember HO is always equals. And then what is H1? Well, yeah, it's, it's always going to be the opposite. It's always going to be the opposite. So if this is equals. Um, well, I should, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not a very good statement. Let, let me put it this way. One of these two, one of these two needs to be the same as the claim. There we go. That's the part you need to focus on. And what's the claim? The claim is right there. That's why it's so important that you write that claim. So, so in other words, think with me logically for a minute. Um, we, we, we start with the first one, P equal, always equal. The first one is always equal. And then when we get to the second one, how do we know what it is? Well, one of these two must be the same. One of these two needs to be, must be the same as the claim. What's the claim? Not equal to 14. Well, ask yourself, is this guy right now the same as the claim? No. He's equals. The claim is not equals. That's, that's different. Right. So therefore, this one must be the claim. Does that make sense? This one must be the claim because one of them has to be the claim. One of those two has to be the claim. And I'm going to write claim just for my own note right next to H1. That's what's being claimed. Does everybody see that? So let me give you a couple scenarios. Let, let me show you. So if you have, if you have, so here's some examples that may help you. So if you're, if they are saying on yours, see what were the words? Um, is this percent different? Okay. So if they say, if they say percent, oh wait, sorry. My pen is having some kind of, oh, all right. Having some kind of, there we go, a little problem with my pen. So if they say on yours, percent is uh, more or bigger or higher, then that would mean the claim is P greater than whatever the number. 
and you would write HO, H1 as follows. HO is equal to the number always. HO is always equal. And what would H1 be? Well, one of these needs to be the claim. So it would come down here and be greater than, and it would be the claim, for example. Do you see that? One of those two needs to be the claim. So the claim must go, must go on one of these. It must go on one of these, and it obviously can't go on this guy because he's always equals. So greater is different. Are you tracking with me? Let me give you another answer. Let me, let me, let me lay out three situations to make it clear. What if it says percent, percent smaller? or less, um, then that's going to be, that's going to be a claim that P is less than a number, right? P is on the narrow side. And then so when it comes to HO, what's HO? Always, always equal, always, no exceptions. What's H1 going to be? Well, again, remember, one of these two must be the claim. One of these two must be the claim. So in that case, if one of those two must be the claim, then it would have to be the other one would be less than the number. You see that? See how the claim went right there and you write claim next to it? See how the claim went right there and we wrote claim next to that? So everybody's seeing that. One of those two must be the claim. HO is always equal. HO is always equal, no exceptions. HO is always equal. And don't, don't skip writing the claim. And then remember, one of those two must be the claim. Well, it can't be HO because he's equal. Well, then, then the claim must be H1. Same thing here. Claim must be H1 because HO is always equal. Now, let's do, there's two more. So I'll give you the four scenarios that are possible. And you'll have the whole story. So there's two other scenarios that are possible. And that is coming down here. You could have, um, oops, you could have that the percent is different. I showed you that one, right? That was the one I'm doing. Is different. If they say different, remember, that's a claim that P is not equal. So if they say different or not the same, that's not equal. And then your HO, what's HO? Always, always equals. And what would H1 be in that case? H1 would be, you tell me now, what's, what's H1 gonna be, remember? It would be, um not equals exactly it'd be not equal because remember this claim must go on one of these two it has to right let me write that that's the key part to remember one of these two must be the claim because something's being claimed so one of these two must be the claim so in that case it can't be ho right why not because ho is always equals so if your claim is not equals, it can't be HO. Well, then it's got to go on H1. All right, is that good so far? One more case, one last case. And this one can be tricky. If it says percent 
is or same as. That means they're claiming that P equals a number, right? If the percent is a number or it's the same as a number, then that means it's equal to it, right? And so when you go to your HO, what is, what is HO? Always, always, no exceptions, always equal, okay? And then what's H1 gonna be in that case? Well, hold on, remember the rule we just observed here. One of these two must be the claim, right? One of these two must be exactly the same as the claim. Remember that rule. Remember, remember two things, keep two things fixed in your mind. HO is always equal, no exceptions. And one of these two, either HO or H1, must be the same as the claim. It's got to be. So let me grab the claim. Here's the claim. So which one is, is HO the same as the claim? Yes, in this case, it is, right? The claims equals and HO is always equals. So in this, only this case, the HO would be the claim, right? This is the claim, it matches the claim exactly. So the claim is HO in that case and H1, what's H1 gonna be? Well, it's always the opposite. So what's the opposite of equals? Not equals, not equals the number. So then being the different and the same is not equals for H1, right? Uh, right, right. Okay. That's right, H1 because H1 is different. H1 is not the same, that's right. And the claim would be up there on HO. So there's the four scenarios that we will have. Four different scenarios that we will have. All right, so um, maybe, maybe I'll type it up like that. I don't know, I've already got notes for you. But um, let's, let's go, so let's go into our problem. So, so rather than memorize those four scenarios, I think you would be better served by keeping two key facts. HO is always equal, and one of these two has to be the same as the claim. The rest will flow from those two facts. All right, getting back to, the, to my problem anyway. What did I do? Here was the claim up here. It said different, so that's not equal. HO is always equal. HO is always equal. And then one of these two, either HO or H1, must be one of these two needs to be the same as the claim. What's the claim? Not equal. So the claim has to be down here on H1, not equals. So there's the claim. Let's keep on moving with this problem. Test statistic. That's going to be a Z on that is our test statistic. Um, that'll, that'll make sense in a second. I'm just telling you what, what the option is there. It's going to be Z. And um, now we're going to go to our calculator. So how are we going to go to our calculator? Well, let me come down here and show you on the notes. Get all the way down here. Here it is. So coming on down to the notes, um, uh, where I'm on number four down here. So we're done with the setup which is really the hard part. Calculator is the easy part. So P percentage, hypothesis test using the TI-84 for the P, that's what we're doing. We're gonna choose the one prop Z test. So on your calculator, you're gonna choose the one prop Z test. P zero is the number from H zero. X is the number being asked for. N is the total number. And then you do the greater than, less than, or not equal depending on whatever matches H one. So there it is, there's what we're gonna do. Let's go up and see it. So 
So I'm going to go to my calculator. Let me put it down here. And on my calculator, <clears throat> maybe I'll choose it down here. So I'm going to hit, I'll write it out and then I'll show it on my actual calculator. I'm going to hit second. Oh, uh, oh wait, I'm no, I'm sorry, I'm going to hit stats. I'm getting confused on what I'm going to hit here. I'm going to hit the stat button and go over to tests and go down to one prop Z test, which is down on number five. One prop Z test and hit enter. And when you do, it'll ask you for a P0, an X, an N, and a proportion down here. Okay, so what's the P0? Same number that's Percent. to H0. So that little zero is to remind you of the H0 number. So you just go up and grab whatever number you have next to H0. In my case, that's the point 0.14. And then the X and the N, that's the, that's the number, I don't know how I wrote it in the notes. That's the number, um, how did I write it in the notes? I don't even know what to say about the number. It's the number, it's the number, that's not very helpful. Uh, it's the number being asked for, okay, I guess so. Number and then N's the total number. So X is the number being asked for. The number asked for, in my case, what do they mean number asked for? Well, that's, that's the um, 313 total millionaires, 38 can wiggle their ears. That's what they're asking for. How many can wiggle their ears? So that's going to be 38 out of, was it 314? I already forgot. 38, uh, 313. 313. 38 out of 313. This is the total number. 313. Right there for me anyway. And then the and that, as far as the proportion, you do same as H1. So whatever you have on H1, greater, less, not equal, whatever. In my H1, I have not equal. So not equal for my case. So I put those numbers in and I'll show it in a minute. Let me do it on my handheld calculator and then I'll do it for you all to see. Hit calculate, and I'm getting the following numbers. I'm getting Z equals minus 0 0.94806. I'm getting P equals 0 0.34309, 343069. Those are all I need. I don't care about that P hat or that N, those other numbers that come after. I really don't care about those numbers. <clears throat> I just care about these numbers. So let me show you now on the actual calculator. You calculated, right? For the, for, yeah. towards the end. There's an option at the bottom that says calculator draw. Yeah, yeah, go down and, that's right. Yeah, hit, hit the calculate. All right, so there it is. All right, so I'm going to go stat, go over to tests, go down to one prop Z, hit enter, and there it is, P0. And what was my P0? It was 0 0.14. 0 0.14, and I'll go down or hit enter either way. My X was 38, go down, N is 313, and go down, it's on not equals, that's perfect, that's mine is not equals, but if yours is less or greater, do whatever you have in H1, then hit enter on the calculate. 
And there's those values. I would say all we care about is the top two, the Z and the P. I don't care about the P hat or the N. We don't need those. We just need the Z and the P is what they're going to ask us for in the question. All right, so I'll go back to my iPad, finish up this question now. It's a very long question. <laughs> all right, so we got all those numbers. Coming up here now, it, here it's asking me for the Z value. So I'll tell Z is, and they want what, three decimal places? So I'll go negative 0.948, mine anyway. And then they say, what's the P value? Well, my P value came out to be, and they want four decimal places on that, 0.3431. Three, four, three, one. And is they, that the P that you got when you calculated the answer? Is it, it's the P, right? Yep, it's the P okay. that I got right here when I hit the buttons on the calculator. Okay. That's right, it's that P. I know we have a lot of P's in this problem, don't we? Yeah, yeah, that's the P you calculated when you put everything in, exactly. Seems like everything's a P. Um, right, and then, and then finally it says the P value is and they want you to say, is it greater than or less than um, alpha? Now, now what that, that, that little, that's a Greek letter anyway, alpha. Wait, what's that? Well, that's right here. Look up here. Here's your alpha. See that? 0. 0.05. Alpha is 0. 0.05, isn't it? And they're asking, and what's the p-value? Well, it's 0. 0.3431. We have it, it's right above us, right? Okay, let me, yeah, here, I'll put it over here. 0. 0.34, so the P value, 3431. The alpha, which is 0. 0.05. So what, what do you guys think? Is this greater than or less than? In my case, yeah, which way does it go? Is 34, Greater than or smaller than five? Greater than. Greater. So that goes this way, huh? The wide mouth side, remember, is towards the bigger one. Some people like to say it's like an alligator wanting to eat the bigger piece of meat. So yeah, the wide mouth side is towards the bigger one. So this one's bigger, isn't it? At least in my case. You might have got a p-value that's smaller than the alpha. Now, I know I haven't mentioned what this means. I'm about to, though. So we good to there. So you choose which way it goes. And then they ask the question, based on this, we should blank the null hypothesis. And so we've got to choose the right option there. Based on this, we should reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. How do we, how do, we do that? Well, that's the most important part. We're basically to the point of determining whether we're going to believe the study or not. How are we going to do that? Well, let me, let me show you the notes. I gave it to you in the notes. And here, here it is. So looking back to the notes, it is right here. If the P is low, meaning lower than the significance of this, this is alpha here. Alpha. Alpha. So if P is less than alpha, then HO must go. Cross out HO, reject the null, strong evidence. Whereas on the other hand, if P is greater than alpha, P is not low, it's bigger, it's not low, then you keep the HO, cross out the H1, fail to reject the null, weak evidence. All right, I know that seems like a lot of information. You'll have your notes during the exam, but we'll do these for the next month and you'll get really comfortable with them. So here's the main saying. If the P is low, meaning less, the HO, the null, must go away. That's the crucial say. If you just keep saying that to yourself, it'll help you know what the conclusion means. If the P is low, 
the null must go. That's what I'm saying right here. If the P is low, then the null must go, right? That's the key thing. If the P is low, meaning if it's less than, the HO, the null, must go, go away, be crossed out. See, cross out the HO. If it's not, then you keep it. All right, so let me, let me go back. You can look at your notes there. Let's go back and do it on this question. So back to our question. So <clears throat> what was our p-value? Yeah. Right here. Here's the p-value. It came out 3431. Did the p-value come out, my p-value anyway, come out greater than or less than? Mine came out greater. So my p is greater. In my case, P is greater, P is not low. Does everybody see that? My P is greater, so he's not low, he's big, right? My P is not low, so the HO does not go away. Are you tracking with those words I wrote there? Yeah, um, Mr. Heron, um, I only have two options for mine and none of them compute. So basically, um, I have a less than equal to and then a greater than. Right. My, my alpha is 0.10, but my p value is 0 0.01. But it doesn't give me the, an option for um, less than. So I would not know how to do the equals to less than. Um, Juan, we can check with that later. Every okay. problem I've done gives all gives all three options. It should be less okay. than, you're right. Yeah, but I don't get the option for it. So I yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's happening there. We'll check with that in the breakout session. But you're right. Okay. It should be less than. Okay, thank you. Um, is that, is this, is this sentence making sense? Um, it's so, so my, so, so remember the phrase, if the P is low, the null must go, right? Everybody remember it. That's, that's the key phrase. If the P is low, HO must go away. But in my case, the P is not low. So the HO does not go away. So if the P is low, the null must go. If the P is not low, the null must not go away. So therefore, based on this, we should fail for mine, fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? Because it's not going away, right? If it goes away, you reject it. Does that make logical sense? If something, if something goes away, you reject it. So if it does not go away, you fail to reject it. You fail to reject it. It does not go away. We fail to reject it. How do we know if it's like, like I don't understand it for mine. Like I. So it's all about if the p-value is greater then that's not low. Okay, okay, if okay. value is less, lesser things are low. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's right over here. My p-value is greater, which is not low. So you have to determine is your p low or not low? So if p, if p is greater, that's not low, because it's bigger, right? If p is less, if p is less, then that's low. Yeah, so good question. So if P is greater, that's not low. If P is less, then that is low. So it's all about whether your P, it's all about what happened right there. Is P greater or is P less? Greater is not low, less is low. And then from there, you make a conclusion about the null. And the conclusion is, if the P is low, the null must go. If the P is not low, the null must not go away. So that's my conclusion. My P was greater, it's not low. 
So the null does not go away, meaning I fail to reject the null, meaning I keep the null. I keep it. I, I don't reject it. I fail to reject it. So therefore, I'm keeping the null. Is that making sense there? So I'm actually keeping the null in my case. I fail to reject it, which means I keep it. Okay, so what does that mean now? I've written all over this thing now. It means I'm going to keep the null. What, what was the null right here? That's why the null is the HO, right? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep this, meaning I'm going to believe this evidence and not the other evidence. What is that? Equals. I'm going to believe that the, the percentage of millionaires is really equal to 0.14. That's my conclusion. I'm going to believe when all this is said and done, I'm going to say, you know what? Um, we did the little millionaire study with the people that could wiggle their ears and 38 out of 313. Yeah, it came out a little different. Remember, we looked at it, it was 12%, but that's just not strong enough evidence. Yeah, it came out a little different, but it didn't come out really different. That's not, you know, just a few more would have made it the same. So we believe that millionaires have the same percentage of ear wiggling as everybody else based on this study, the evidence is not strong enough. It's not strong enough to believe that there's really a difference in ear wiggling for millionaires. That's my conclusion, right? Because I'm keeping the null. And what does the null say? It says equal, equal to 0.14, same as 0.14. So which one of these has that conclusion? I don't know. I can't hardly read the words down here. Man. So, Mr. Harrod, if it's one second, let me draw the conclusion, and then I'll then I'll take questions. So, let's read through these right here. This first one says the data suggests the population is not significantly different from 14. Yeah, that's what it says. So, there is statistically significant evidence. Oh, yeah. Last thing I need to tell you, there's always It's weak evidence. Whenever, when there's always weak evidence on the HO and there's strong evidence on the H1, we're concluding, let me write that. There's weak here, strong here. It takes strong evidence to prove H1. It takes, weak, if the evidence is weak, you stick with HO. That's what we're doing. We're sticking with HO, right? Down here, I said, I'm, oh, it's off the screen now. I'm keeping HO which means the evidence was weak. That's the problem. It's like a court of law where we're keeping the assumption of innocence. The evidence was not strong. So let's read again this thing. The data suggests the population is not different from 0.14. That's true. So there is statistic, statistically significant evidence. No, there's not. There's, there's not significant evidence. That's wrong. How about the next one? The data suggests it's significantly different. No, no, it's not. How about this one? The data is suggests it's not significantly. Yeah, we said not, um, not different, right? We said equals. That's not different from 14%, right? So there is statistically insignificant evidence. Yeah, there's weak evidence. That word means weak, insignificant to conclude. There it is. There's our conclusion. The evidence is insignificant. It's weak. It's too weak. So we conclude that there's not a significant difference. Millionaires do not have a difference on that one. 